This is example 13 in the partial fractions topic. It's the second example where we're dealing with improper rational functions and where we're combining uh, algebraic long division with our partial fractions skills. So we have here uh, a ra an improper rational function. Um, it's improper because effectively with this uh, expression in the numerator is a quadratic expression and the expression in the denominator is also quadratic. Technically the order is the same. Um, but in terms of rational functions, it can only be proper if the order and the numerator is less than the order in the denominator. So if the order is the same, we still have to regard it as improper. And in that regard, we still have to do a bit of algebraic long division to create a quotient or a polynomial function. And what is left will definitely be a, a proper rational function. So we're going to, first of all, have a look at what we've got here. x plus 2 multiplied by x minus 2 divided by x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 1. Well, we've got a pattern going on there that the numerator x plus 2 and x minus 2 looks a bit like a difference of two squares. If we multiplied it out, we would get four terms, simplify it down. But by inspection, hopefully you could see by the reverse difference of two squares, effectively, that we would have x squared minus 4. And in the same way, if we multiplied out x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 1, we're going to get x squared minus 1. So, interestingly, when we're doing partial fractions, we need a factorised denominator. But to do the initial step of algebraic long division, we need the uh, unfactorized denominator. So we've got x squared minus 4 divided by x squared minus 1. We're going to do our algebraic long division with that. I'll do it along here. So we've got x squared minus 4 divided by x squared minus 1. So we look at our highest order term in the dividend and highest order term in the divisor. x squared divided by x squared is just going to be 1. We'll put that in the units column, as it were, above the negative 4. And if we multiply 1 times x squared minus 1, we get x squared minus 1. We're going to subtract that from the term above it. x squared minus x squared is 0. A negative 4, subtract negative 1, becomes negative 4, add 1, which is negative 3. That term there is a constant term. We can't divide it by x squared minus 1. Uh, also, we've kind of reached the end of our division because our answer 1 goes in the last place. So there's, there's no other division to do. And we can see that negative 3 is going to be our remainder. In other words, at this stage, we can say that x squared minus 4 divided by x minus 1, I just even put that there, we could say that's the same as 1, which is our quotient over here, We've got a quotient of 1. And then we have our plus our remainder. Now, our remainder is actually a negative number, negative 3. So we can put our remainder here, negative 3, and we're dividing that by the original uh, denominator x squared minus 1. In the previous example, uh, I talked about the idea that we could, in theory, simplify that expression so that the negative sign lies between the two. However, with our partial fractions work we're going to do, it always makes sense to keep the, the sign positive. And if there's a negative uh, remainder, keep that in the actual fraction, because it means that when we add our partial fractions back in, we don't have to worry about changing any signs. So again, I'm going to keep it like that. So 1 plus negative 3 over x squared 
minus 1. That's us got a polynomial function, which is the 1 plus partial fractions. Well, we're going to work out the partial fractions then of negative 3 over x squared minus 1. So let's just take that fraction that we've got, negative 3 over x squared minus 1. Well, we're going to refactorize that because now with our partial fractions, we're more interested in the factorized form, which we know from before is x plus 1 times x minus 1. We have a repeated linear factor. So we have two fractions, one with, did I say repeated? We have distinct linear factors. One is x plus 1 and the other is x minus 1. We know there's going to be constant terms in our numerator, so we can make our template as a over x plus 1 plus b over x minus 1. Multiply through by the denominator. And as always, on the left-hand side, we're left with the numerator. On the right-hand side, the first fraction cancels the x plus 1 with the x plus 1. So we're left with a multiplied by x minus 1. And for the second one, we can see that the x minus 1 with dividing cancels with the x minus 1. So we've got b multiplied by x plus 1. We then find our values for x, which are going to help simplify it. We've got x minus 1 as one of our factors. So we're going to choose when x equals 1. So that bracket goes to 0. When x is 1, negative 3 is still going to be negative 3. The a term is going to go to 0 because that 1 minus 1 is 0. And our b term, b multiplied by, well, 1 plus 1. That gives us 2b. So 2b is negative 3. And therefore b is going to take the value negative 3 over 2. And we can look back up at uh, the original equation here and see the second factor here is x plus 1. Which means that um, we can substitute in x minus 1. Do you know what I'm going to do though? I'm going to change tack there and uh, I'm going to have a look at the fact that if I multiply out these brackets here I've got a times x that's my x term here and I've got another x term which is b multiplied by x. Now if you look over on the right hand side there is no x term. In other words there would be a 0x the coefficient of an x term there would have to be 0 for it not to be there. Which means that um, we can say that if we want to equate the x terms, then we can say that on the left hand side we've got 0x is equal to, well, we know that we're going to get. A ax and then we were going to have a bx term. So if we check that again, uh, we've got 0, 0x zero on the left and we would have ax and we would have then plus bx, which means therefore that we drop the x term to really just saying that 0 is a plus b. We know that b is negative 3 over 2, which means that a has to take the positive value of that a is 3 over 2. That's us got our values for a. We could have um, substituted x equals negative 1 in as we did for when x equals 1, uh, and that still works, but it's sometimes interesting to look at equating terms. Sometimes uh, it's easier or quicker. Sometimes it's uh, a wee bit longer or a wee bit more challenging. You just have to look at the different uh, strategies and think what one is best for this situation. So we've got our two values for a and b, which means we're ready to kind of put our partial fractions together. Um, 
so what we can do is let's just put it all together at the end so therefore we write down our original expression which was x plus 2 multiply by x minus 2 over x plus 1 times x minus 1 is equal to well we had a 1 there as our a polynomial expression and then we had our plus sign and we have our two partial fractions our first denominator is x plus one and our second one was x minus one i'll just check that i got that right in the original all right we had to split it up and a was over x plus one and b was the one over x minus one a is three over two so what we can do with this is that if, if we've got a fraction we can put a numerator on the the top and the two goes on the bottom as a multiplier just make sure that you put a bracket to make sure it's everything's multiplied by two and b is also three over two we've got a three here we've got a two here but importantly b is negative so we have a minus sign before that fraction so we have created a polynomial uh, function and partial fraction so we can say here that our original improper rational function can be expressed as polynomial function plus partial fractions there we go